Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy, and today I'm excited to show you something really cool. With this technique, you can actually see everywhere that your blend if options are affecting your photograph. So normally you just move those sliders around, you really have no idea what the blend if is going on. Now, by adding a solid color fill layer above it, you can see exactly where our blend if is taking place from this noise reduction layer. So let's hop into Photoshop. Got a lot of cool stuff to show you in this tutorial. So what I want to show you today is how you can actually visualize the exact spot where your blend if layer styles are taking place on your photograph. Now, when you move those sliders, you can kind of see what are what things are being affected, but it's not as visually appealing as maybe like a mask. If you're painting on your layer with a mask, you can alt click on the mask and that'll show you in black and white where your mask is actually affecting the photograph. Or you can go into quick mask mode and that'll show you like a red haze over the areas where your mask is affecting. But with blend if you don't get that, you just get these sliders that move back and forth. So how do we make it? so we can visualize exactly what we're doing with blend if that's what i'm going to show you today i showed this in another tutorial uh, a couple weeks ago but it was buried toward the back of that tutorial so now i want to show you really quickly how you can do it here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to control or command j duplicate that background layer and that's i'm going to do some noise reduction on here so i'm going to zoom in to this area here because that's exactly where i want that noise reduction to take effect just right in this area and then i'm going to go to filter I'm going to go to Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. So in Adobe Camera Raw as a filter, just zoom back into that area there. I'm going to go to my noise reduction settings. I'm not going to do anything else with this photograph. I'm just going to go ahead and jam up that, that luminance and drop that luminance detail all the way down. Now, typically, this would be an awful way to reduce your noise because as we do this, we're also losing all the detail that would be anywhere else in our photograph. So if we go to fit and view and even right here on the on the Mona Lisa here. Now, this is in uh, a mock-up of what da Vinci's office might look like. It was an exhibit here in Kansas City. So if we were to turn our preview settings off, now we, we like the detail that's happening in this uh, canvas here, but when we turn our, our noise reduction settings on, we kind of like what's happening back here with the noise being so uh, pushed back and subtle, okay? So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make a really extreme noise reduction here because I wanna show you how this blend if stuff works. So I've done a lot of videos in the past with blend if showing you how you can uh, blend skies in, um, you know, all kinds of things that you can do with blend if adding textures to photographs, uh, crazy things you can do with blend if. But I've never really showed you how you can see exactly what's being affected in your photograph when you do that blend if stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new color fill layer right on top of here. So go into your adjustment layers, click solid color, and we're going to cho choose a magenta color, the most saturated version of magenta we can get. So 255 red, 255 blue, purely saturated magenta. So we've got an all magenta image now when we've solid color filled this all right i want you to press alt or option and have that go right into this layer here this is called a clipping mask and a clipping mask says hey you layer i've got clicked on i want you to only apply yourself to everything that's below you in just that layer below you and i want you to apply yourself in the exact same way that that layer applies itself to the rest of the photograph Kind of confusing at first but we'll press that alt and we'll click right in between the two of them and it's basically saying that this layer now has all the properties of the layer directly below it so when i double click right here in that layer one and go into the blending options and go into my layer styles here and move my blend if i can actually see exactly where my blend if is applying itself to so when it comes to noise reduction i usually only want to apply the noise reduction to my shadow areas and even into some of my mid-tone areas but not into my highlights okay so right now moving this over it's only applying itself to the highlights and it's not applying itself to the shadows so i'm going to move this side over and that's going to protect all of my highlight areas that mona lisa picture all of my highlight areas all the way to my mid-tones you can see that predominantly this photo is made up of a lot of very dark values so if you move this right to about our mid Mid tones and say okay from the mid tones at 128 alt or option split and feather down so that's where the noise reduction is going to take place the noise reduction is going to take place on anything that is uh, from zone zero feathering itself into zone five but in between it's going to have a nice smooth transition for those those mid tone areas nice smooth transition so I'll press okay 
And now we'll take a look at it. We'll zoom in here and we'll turn that solid color fill layer off. And that's showing us where our noise is affecting our image. And it's only affecting it in those deep shadow areas. Okay, see that there? That looks pretty good. So if I turn that solid color fill layer on, we get to see exactly the areas where noise reduction is taking place. And like I showed you before, the canvas that we have here, the canvas is now not losing any detail from that very harsh noise reduction that we did on our photograph. And if you ever want to go back and tweak it, you just double click right inside here and say, okay, I want to just make that, make that a little less little less on that on that uh, noise reduction there so that it only affects itself in those very dark shadow areas I would always suggest to keep this magenta layer on here because as you do your work you might find that you want to add other things to it so keep that magenta layer there until you're ready to flatten your image down and then just go ahead and toss it if you don't want to see exactly where that noise reduction is taking place just turn the eyeball off pretty cool so what did we discuss well we discussed a very very deep noise reduction on our image that I would never do uh, unless I was using blend if now it's not a bad noise reduction when we when we look at our photograph now it's actually a pretty decent noise reduction yeah it's kind of blending and blurring things together our darks are turning this kind of hazy turn uh, of of gray but we can recover that too if we were to create another clipping mask above here with the curves adjustment layer that's now clipped into this also we could just go ahead and move that back over to re resurrect some of the darks in our uh, noisy areas so that they get that back with the noise reduction. Very excellent way to reduce noise. Now we have extreme control over those dark areas. So now our, those dark areas are not just losing the, the noise that's in there, they're also gaining uh, a deeper value of that curves adjustment layer. And we see exactly what's being affected by that curves adjustment layer and the noise reduction when we turn that magenta eye on. Okay, so we discussed noise reduction, very deep, strong noise reduction in Adobe Camera Raw. We discussed a clipping mask and how you can clip a solid color fill layer into that noise reduction layer and then go into your blending options and move your bl blending options with your layer styles there to get our noise reduction to only affect our shadow areas and not affect any of the highlights. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. If you like this, please comment, share, thumbs up, like, send it to a friend, do anything you got to do to just uh, push out this good knowledge uh, throughout the community. And if you like what you saw, subscribe because I put these tutorials out quite often. And as I crank them out, you'll be receiving them in your email. Thank you again for watching. I really do appreciate your time. Mm -hmm.